Hi everyone, welcome to Maximum Attack Rallying. It's been a while, isn't it? Um, I can't remember the last time I did a video, but I'm back. Uh, and what a week, what a week to do a video. I thought about doing one last week and things got the better of me, so I didn't. And then this week, wow, oh, man, where do we start? There's um, loads going on, isn't it? Absolutely loads going on right now. Um, it feels like, I put a tweet up about this earlier, I don't tweet very much, but I did this time. Um, it feels like silly season is kind of over, doesn't it? All this talk about what's going to happen next year, and then it feels like within the space of a few days, everything's been been kind of decided. There's a few little loose, loose ends to tie up, which I'll come to. Um, obviously, the big news this week is that Craig Breen has joined M Sport on a two-year deal with Paul Nagelis, his co-driver. Uh, well... <sighs> Obviously, if you follow any of the other uh, major rallying news outlets, this has been known for a while, um, but didn't come out. Um, are we surprised? I don't think I am surprised. Um, not, I'm not surprised. Let me let me start again. I'm not surprised that Craig and Paul have joined M Sport because, for them, having a full time campaign, full season in a car is absolutely essential, isn't it? That had to be the goal. After what they've achieved this season, three podiums in the last three events in the World Car, they ha they have to have a full season. They have to. There's no other no other option. So for them, they were going to go with whoever would give them a full season. So M Sport was the choice because, and this is the weird bit for me, because Hyundai let him go or let them go, and that I don't understand. I think. Given the performances that they've put in, you know, not being in the car regularly, to come and bang out podiums and be right in amongst it, right in amongst what are some of the best drivers, well, you know, they're the best rally drivers in the world right now, um, in some fantastic cars. I, I'm staggered, really, that Adamo and, and Hyundai decided not to put them in a car full time. I don't, um, I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Obviously, Hyundai had signed their, you know, two of their their crews in in uh, Thierry Neville and uh, Martin Viediger and, uh, and and Tanak, but the third car we you know we thought for a while was open, and Adamo himself had given us clues that maybe this rotation strategy that they've used for the last few years wasn't wasn't the thing to do anymore. And now it seems that he's he's stuck with it, and I, that, I don't know. I, there's a lot of debate, isn't there, about whether that's the right move. I think with such a change in the cars for next year, for me, I, I would probably err on the side of consistency, have the same people in the car, rally in, rally out, getting as much seat time as possible. For me, that would have been Craig Breen, probably, um, given his record. I can understand why Hyundai want to put uh, Solberg in the car because he's, you know, he's their 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 protege for the future, and they've put a lot of effort into him. So I get it. For me, I think I would have maybe carried on as they were and put him in a, a fourth car where possible next year, and maybe just to help helped him build up. You know, keep him in the Rally Two car and, and, and keep developing, keep doing as many rallies as possible. I think the split program with Danny Sordo for me, I'm not sure. I would have gone down that route. I'm not a WRC team principal. God forbid that I would be. That would be a disaster. But for me, that seems a strange move. I would have gone for a, for one crew, and for me, that one crew had to be Breen. If you couldn't get Breen for any reason, if Breen was determined to go to M Sport, I would probably would have just put Solberg in the car full time. I have nothing against Danny Sordo. He's been at the team a long time, and he's he's done a good job. But I think familiarity is everything now, and I I would have scrapped the, the rotation system but they've kept it it seems that Toyota are also keeping it because the other piece of news I am going to get back to him support don't worry the other piece of news is that um, Auger as expected will be doing a part time program however uh, Esapeka Lappi will be his uh, partner in crime you know sharing a car with him again I don't think anyone's surprised by that I think we all knew it was coming that being said Lappi's performance in Finland definitely cemented why he deserves to be back in a world car or a rally one car as they are next year he did a brilliant job didn't he to come back finish fourth and be he wasn't on the ultimate pace but to be there or thereabouts 
was really impressive actually. So it just shows that he deserved another shot. His move to Citroen was a disaster. I think he'd admit that it was a disaster and I think it was the wrong decision. He left Toyota at the wrong time and went to the wrong team. But he's going back. Hopefully this is a chance for him to rebuild and make his way to the top. And I suspect Ogier will do one season and, and then go off and do something else. And then you would hope he would get the third car full time. Uh, obviously the other news in, in Toyota land is that Ingrassia has decided that this will be his last year. So Ogier will have a new co-driver for next year. Seems to be co-driver... Uh, Musical chairs, doesn't it? This year, lots of lots of changes. So it's just another another step in the co-driver drama of 2021. Um, but yeah, the big news is M Sport, and M Sport is where the questions lie, isn't it? That's what I want to talk about a little bit. Breen for them is brilliant. However, I will just say this: I don't want to be I don't want to be a downer because I think Craig really deserves the shot, and he has been absolutely brilliant this year. Um, if you look at the coverage, they're making a big thing of it, obviously, you know, talking about all the, how magical it is and how all the great things that could happen. I think the only thing I would say for Craig is don't put the pressure on him. You know, he's had a brilliant year with the rallies that he's done. He's done all of the right things in the last few years. You know, he lost his drive. He's been pushing and pushing and pushing, winning rallies, doing rallies in different cars. He's been doing everything he can and he absolutely deserves this shot. But just give him a chance. Let's not talk like Craig Breen is going to win the championship next year because he probably isn't he could but he probably isn't let's just let him settle in for 2022 do a full campaign get used to the events hopefully pick up a win or two and just get him sport back to the top that would be enough for me and I think we just need to just cut him a little bit of slack not pile the pressure on him just yet and just let him get into it get into the rhythm of doing every rally in a new car so that's really good the flip of this of course is the unfinished business of Silly Season which is that we don't actually know who is going to be in the other M Sport uh, Pumas obviously lots of talk about Loeb potentially doing a part time programme with them which would be interesting I have mixed feelings on that if he goes in there to mentor Adrian Formo, does a couple of rallies and, and helps Formo build because I think Formo has potential then yes I think we just need to be a little bit careful, you know. I know Loeb loves rallying, but personally I think I would prefer him just going off, doing his own thing, driving the Peugeot 306 that you can't really see on my t-shirt, and just enjoying himself, enjoying rallying for the love of it. Um, yes, I understand that he wants to do world events still, and wants to drive world championship cars, and I get that, but just be careful with that record, Seb. Be careful with that legacy. But... Yes, it's an option, isn't it? It's a good option for M Sport. It will help them develop the car. It will help Formo develop. For me, I would want Formo in a, in a car next year, even if it's part time, shared with Loeb, but hopefully mostly in favour of Formo. The other car, the full time car, assuming they run three cars, this is obviously, for me, has to be someone consistent and someone with the ability to back up Breen. Obviously, Greensmith is, is there right now and has been progressing. For me, he doesn't fit that role. I would like to see Mickelson in the Puma next year. I know that that was a possible if the brain thing didn't work out. Maybe it's still a possible with his even management backing. If it is still even management. Is it still even management? I don't even remember him. But with his backing, um, I would like to see him back in a wild car, I think he has, still has something to give. I think Breen and Mickelson, as the two main drivers for M Sport, would actually make them a pretty strong team. Obviously, we're assuming that their car will be as good as everyone else's. They've got they've got a, a head start on everyone else. They've they're ahead of everyone else in in terms of testing and development. I think Toyota will very quickly catch them up purely because of their resources. Uh, High and I remain possibly at a little bit of a disadvantage but big team so I don't count them out but I think for me M Sport really have to take advantage of this shift in regulations as they did in 2017 they really have to come out of the blocks fast really fast in January they have to go to Monty and be there you know difficult for Breen because he doesn't have the event experience I think that's why they need a Mickelson or someone of that nature obviously a Loke could do that job to some degree obviously he's not 
quite what he was, but still a very capable driver. But they need that, you know, they need that energy to start the season, to get off on the right foot and build because Toyota and Hyundai, as the season goes on and they get used to the cars, will come on strong. So I think for me, that second Puma needs to go to someone established, someone with some experience, someone who knows the rallies, knows what it's like to drive a top level car. And for me, out of the available drivers, that probably has to be Mickelson. You might argue Frostberg. I think really what I, I like Mads, I think he's probably had his time. You could argue for Padden. I would like to see Hayden back in a world rally car or rally one car for next year. That being said, you know, with the things he's doing outside of the WRC with his electric rally car, I actually think that's potentially a more exciting future for him. Yes, I know he's going to be super hungry to get back into a world car and super hungry to have a proper shot at the WRC. But I think, in a way, I would like, I'd love to see Hayden back, but I'd also love to see what he does with his own you know, with his own thing and with it, with the elect, with the EV, and, and and I think he could be building something really exciting there. So I don't want him to risk that in order to to come back to the WRC in a way. I think he has to balance that very carefully. So that really leaves Mickelson, doesn't it? Because I don't actually think there's anyone out there. You could argue for Meek, but I, I don't think that's going to be the right fit. So Mickelson is is the one. I think Breen and Mickelson in those two cars with a third car rotating for Formo. Uh, and Loeb, mostly for Formo, I think would be a good combination. Where does that leave Greensmith? That depends on how much money he's got, doesn't it? That depends on his backing. If he can fund a car, I would love to see him back. You know, I'd love to see him competing again. I have nothing against Greensmith. He's developing very well. He's definitely kicked it up a notch this season. And if he can afford it, why not? You know, he gets a lot of stick Greensmith, as a lot of funded drivers do. It's undeserved, in my opinion. If we had the money, all of us would be there. If we had the funding, the sponsorship, the family money, whatever it is, we would all be there. We would all be doing what he's doing. So I don't think anyone can begrudge him that because, you know, that's how life works. Some people have these opportunities. So if he can make it happen, he should make it happen. But for me, that would be enough semi-works capacity in a private car or a fourth car if it means that M Sport can get Mickelson or some of that stature into the main team because they're going to need that you know in 17 and 18 when they won the championship it's getting long isn't it when they uh, won the championship they didn't just have Ogier they had Tanak they had Evans they had a strong team and that's really what they're lacking Breen is a great addition and gives them that top line driver who can compete at the front. But they need that backup. They need a solid number two, borderline number one, you could argue, that can help them kick on and have a good shot at not just the driver's title, but the manufacturer's title, but also give them, whoever goes for the driver's title, some support to take points from Toyota and Hyundai. That's what they need. And putting Breen in and having Greensmith and Formo doesn't give them that for me. I think they need that extra dimension. So, Yes, so I wasn't planning to talk about Silly Season. I was going to talk about Rally Finland and what a great job Lappy did and what an amazing job Evans did, who I haven't even mentioned in this video, but I'm going to mention now. Um, but with everything that's happened in the last couple of days about Breen and Toyota and everything, it's, it's all got lost, hasn't it? It's all been forgotten because we're all excited about next year. But yes, Evans Finland was a magnificent performance absolutely what he needed after a pretty awful run so to see him win a rally was brilliant to see him win in Finland was even better because not many Brits have won in you know he's only the second Brit to win in Finland so that he is he's back with a bang the championship's gone you know OJ is going to probably going to wrap it up in Spain for me but to get himself back in amongst it was brilliant to see him win again Hopefully that will give him a boost for next year and we'll see him mount a proper championship charge next season. So that was really good. Also, quick mention, I've got 10 seconds. Hyundai have suddenly fixed it. They've fixed Finland, haven't they? They've broken the Finland jinx. So that was really good. Anyway, that's enough. I've got 10 seconds to finish. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Sorry it's been so long. I will try and do these more often. Please like and subscribe and all that. And uh, I'll catch you again very soon.